Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And as Tucker is scratching my arm right now, I am practicing peace and serenity, let me just tell you. This is like the third time that I have tried to film this video, okay? I have read this meditation in the book, Don't Sweat the Sm Small Stuff, like three times. Let me just tell you. These dogs have wrestled in this chair. <laughs> Boo Radley has scratched behind me to make a hole in the ground for the entirety of half a video. Then a squirrel ran by and Tucker started barking like crazy. I mean, everything that you can imagine, Boo Radley jumped down and went into the cord of the ring light. Everything that you could possibly imagine has happened. But we're choosing to practice peace and serenity today. <laughs> so I was like, after trying to like get the video done, I was like, okay, we're just gonna film this video. We're gonna just talk about peace and serenity and we're gonna move into it. So um, today's, you can see, I already check marked it. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying in my other videos, you guys, okay? I love these little dudes so much. They crack me up, and they give so much life to this house, you know? Um, it's always interesting, like, the day um, when we get home from a vacation, and I haven't yet picked them up, and, like, the house is just so absolutely quiet until they come home, you know? So, you guys are funny bunnies, aren't you? <laughs> Tucker said, look at him. He said, I am. I'm a funny bunny. Don't even worry about it. Okay, so, um, what I was saying... <laughs> <laughs> in my previous three times. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm having a great day today, actually. Um, I went and I got my coffee. Where's my coffee? Hold on a second, Tucker. My coffee is, oh. oh. I didn't know that this also was a musical instrument. Hold on a second. Um, uh, and there's Boo Radley. I went and I got my coffee, and it is like kind of a rainy day outside, but it's really, really warm, and it's been making me think about, I can't wait until spring comes, so that I can um, go outside on the back patio and in the yard and I can read some of the meditations because I miss doing that. But today we are going to read from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. I might also read from Nightlight by Amy Dean because look at their little faces are so sweet. Because I love this book and I think many of you like watch these videos right before you go to bed. Um, I'm going to, uh, I was going to say I'm going to San Diego. <laughs> I've said this so many times. I'm going to Phoenix next weekend to meet and hang out with my book club <laughs> Hello, partner Mel, and um, my husband surprised me with this trip that I didn't know anything about, and I'm so excited. So I'm going to Phoenix next week, and he's going to San Diego to hang out with his brother and go to a music festival. And so he's flying, uh, we're flying together to Phoenix, and then he's flying from Phoenix to San Diego, and then he's flying back to, San, or to Phoenix, and then we're flying from back from Phoenix to Indianapolis. Anyway, we're going to have a great weekend. I'm really excited about it. But I am going to be filming videos, because Mel's going to be filming videos with me. And I was trying to think about, I was going to pre-film videos for this channel, and then I thought, you know, why do that? Why not just take a book out there and film it while I'm out there? Um, I'm really excited about going out there. It's going to be warm. So I was like, you know what? I can just do some meditations while I'm out there. But I was trying to figure out, like, what book to take? Because I don't want to take five meditation books, you know? I was like, which, which, which book to take that I can just, like, read every day out there and it won't get, you know, repetitive? So I think I'm going to actually take Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff um, by Richard Carlson. And I do want to say this. Like, you know, in 2019, I read so many meditations from the Melody Beatty books. I probably won't be reading a lot of from them in 2020. I may visit them from time to time, but I don't know which ones I've read before. And you know, since I sit down here and I do this every day, in all honesty, like there's some of these, like I, I keep check marks on the ones I've read because I want to complete the whole book and have read the whole book this year. That's part of my, uh, that's one of my <laughs> intentions. <laughs> We're going to talk about intention in a second. But that's one of my goals for 2020 is to complete this book and maybe do this with another book once I finish this. So I'm check marking them off. But there's a couple in here that I know I've read that I didn't check mark. Um, and I don't want to be repetitive on here. So if I, if I am and I read one of these I've read before, I apologize. Um, but anyway, so I thought I could just go out there and read like two or three of them a day and talk about them. And that would just get us a little further in the book. So like what I was saying was that um, I did so much Melody Beatty in 2019 that if you were going to buy a book for 2020 to kind of read along with me, I know many of you do that. This would probably be the book to, to buy. Um, I don't think I've ever read the entire, I know, I, I know I haven't read the whole thing. My mom gave it to me. I have one in the basement, but I've never read the whole thing. So, okay. Today we're going to talk about, uh, today we're going to read Develop Your Compassion, which is number five in this book. And I've already read it once <laughs> and I got almost to the very end. And that was when Boo Radley jumped into the ring light cord, <laughs> right? Boo Radley. 
he said yes, but I was an adventurer and I was having fun. Okay, it's been a long day, okay? We went outside today several times and one time there was um, a black lab way down there and Boo Radley went out and he just w went running over there because he was ready to meet some new friends. Did you meet some new friends today? <laughs> he said I met lots of new friends today, <laughs> so funny. Develop your compassion. Nothing helps us build our perspective more than developing compassion for others. Compassion is a sympathetic feeling. It involves the willingness to put yourself in someone else's shoes, to take the focus off yourself, and to imagine what it's like to be in someone else's predicament, and simultaneously to feel love for that person. It's the recognition that other people's problems, their pain and frustration, are every bit as real as our own, often far worse. In recognizing this fact and trying to offer some assistance, we open our own hearts and greatly enhance our sense of gratitude. Compassion is something you can develop with practice and involves two things, intention and action. Intention simply means you remember to open your heart. I have to show you this because it's just so sweet, okay? Look at me, Rabbi. Look at them. Aw, little brothers. They're so sweet. Compassion is something you can develop with practice. It involves two things, intention and action. Inten intention simply means you remember to open your heart to others. You expand what and who matters from yourself to other people. Action is simply the what you do about it. You might donate a little money or time or both on a regular basis to a cause near to your heart. Or perhaps you'll offer a beautiful smile, smile and a genuine hello to the people you meet on the street. It's not so important what you do, just, what you, just that you do something. As Mother Teresa reminds us, we cannot do great things on this earth. We can only do small things with great love. Compassion develops your sense of gratitude by taking your attention off all the little things that most of us have learned to take too seriously. When you take time often to reflect on the miracle of life, the miracle that you are even able to read this book, the gift of sight, of love, and all the rest, it can help to remind you that many of the things that you think of as big stuff are really just small stuff that you are turning into big stuff. I love this meditation or this reading or whatever. Um, you know, I, uh, I love the word, here I'm fixing my camera. I love the word intention and I didn't really think much about it until, I don't know, um, let's see, it's 2014, okay, six years ago when I wrote my book. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, I wrote a book and it was called The Before, Now, and After Then. And, um, when it will be re-released with um, the next book when it is published, the two will be re-released or it will be re-released again. Um, I do want to say this really quickly. If you watch my meditation from yesterday, I actually, that was a meditation that I filmed last Sunday and forgot to post, but I was like, I'm going to post it anyway. So I posted it yesterday just in case it confused some people. Um, but I, you know, when I read that book and then I started uh, reading other works and um, I mean, I, I read all the time anyway, but it really, as a writer, started making me think about the idea of writing with intention. And what that means to me is like what you're writing, is it having any kind of profound effect on even one person out there? Is it changing the way that they look at things? Is it changing the way that, um, I mean, cause you know, anything that you do artistically, um, or whatever you do on a daily basis. Like if you're doing it with intention, are you impacting the lives of other people? Are you impacting the environment? Are you impacting the world around you in a positive way? I mean, it, your intention could be negative, but I'm not really sure why most people would wanna live a life with negative intention. I wouldn't, I would wanna live a life with positive intention. So, you know, it all started out of this idea of like, if, if what I'm writing doesn't have any intention to it, what's the point in writing it? Well, if you're writing a book purely for enjoyment, okay, well, maybe it's to offer people enjoyment. And that is a great piece of intention, you know? On my drama channel over there, often I just do things to make people laugh because I want people to enjoy their day. There's nothing wrong with entertainment for entertainment's sake. Nothing, period, right? Like that's actually a great intention to want to make other people laugh or make people escape their daily lives or make people enjoy their life more on a daily basis. Like that's a great bit of intention. But I think that you have to be aware of that that's what you're doing. Um, I think there are other ways to look at your life with intention as well. Am I being, you know, the best friend that I can possibly be, the best son, the best partner, you know, the best, you know, I was going to say friend again, but you know what I mean? Like, who are you in that situation? Like, what is your intention? What is your motive? Is your emote, is your motive selfish? You know, because like we talk a lot about in recovery that selfishness, um, selfishness and self-centeredness is the root of our disease. So when we look at that, you know, we think that everything that we do is from a selfish point of view. 
Well, then that's what needs to be stopped, right? So when we're having relationships with other people or we're interacting with people on a daily basis, we have to ask ourselves, what's our intention, okay? So if we're leading a life of intention with kindness, compassion, you know, and forgiveness and things like that, and we start practicing that, okay, that's the action piece. The intention is, what are we doing? Are we living a life of compassion and empathy? I think those two go hand in hand. Are we living, not sympathy, okay, but empathy, and if you don't know the difference, Google them. <laughs> I mean, it's important to know the difference, I think, between sympathy and empathy. Um, you know, but like, are we, um, you know, what's our intention? So if our intention is compassionate, our intention is that we want to start being more compassionate, kind, loving, caring people, okay? Then we have to put that into practice. And that means we have to practice that on a daily basis, even on days that it doesn't feel great, okay? And sometimes our greatest teachers are people that we don't get along with or people that just push all of our buttons or are real negative in our lives. We've talked a lot about toxicity. Toxic people are a great way for us to practice our intention of compassion because those are the situations where it's gonna be the most difficult. Your best friend, it's not hard to be compassionate towards your best friend or empathetic, right? Pick the person you don't get along with the most and be compassionate and empathetic towards them. Sit in their shoes and see things from their point of view and go, okay, I now see, I see why they feel that way. Or I can, I can understand why from their point of view, that's how they feel, right? Like that's true empathy when you do that, okay? Towards somebody that you really don't like. It's seeing all sides. Well, isn't that the person that you want to be? Wouldn't you want that person that doesn't get along with you to be able to sit in your shoes and see things the way that you see them? And I think that's where the true passion, the true practice of compassion comes into place. But that's really, really difficult, isn't it? And, you know, then the second side of this, you know, uh, this reading or meditation is talking about that all the small stuff that we do. Like, we have the ability on a daily, it's not just talking about you know, that we're turning small little negative things like, you know, getting in like traffic or whatever and turning that into a huge day and letting it ruin our day. Like that, that is a piece, right? But it's also talking about the small little things that we can do on a daily basis. We can smile more at people. We can say, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? You know, not at, waiting for them to ask us, but say, how's your day going? I really like, you know, you look so pretty today. You know, like your hair looks nice. I, I One of the things that's interesting is I don't know if it's just because, like, I'm an observant person, <laughs> R.E. nosy, but, like, I always notice when people get haircuts, okay? And it's so funny because, like, I'll say to people, like, you got your haircut. I really like it. It looks nice, right? Or your hair's different. And they'll say, nobody noticed. You're the only one. Not even my husband noticed, you know? Like, how'd you know? And I'm like, I, can, you know, I don't know. I can just tell. But, you know, it's, like, maybe paying attention more to people and not just our close people in our lives, but everybody around us, you know? Living a life to be more observant, more compassionate, kinder, you know, treating people the way that we would want to be treated. These are things that we all learned before we ever got on the bus for kindergarten or first grade. We knew these things, you know, we knew all of this stuff. Um, you know, it's the golden rule. Treat people the way that we would want to be treated. And I think we've forgotten that, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about this on my vlog, but I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't, uh... <laughs> This is sometimes it's, it's scary to talk about because I don't always get the greatest response from it. I don't think we, uh, I don't think, I don't think many, uh, I would say there are many people out there that don't raise their children the way that I think generationally we were raised, you know, 50 years ago, you know, to call people Mr. and Mrs. and um, to say thank you and um, open the door for somebody else and wait for somebody to come out of an elevator before you walk in. And if you get in somebody's way to say, excuse me, like that's a big one to me, you know? And, um, you know, to, I don't know. I just, it's, it's interesting to me the way that we, um, it's interesting to me, just the way that the world works today, that we've forgotten some of those liberties. And I really think that social media is a huge part of that, you know, that we just treat people so ruthlessly on social media that we've forgotten to be human beings. And um, it makes me sad. It makes me sad. So, you know, I love the Mother Teresa quote in here, and I, you know, that um, we cannot do great things on this earth. We can only do small things with great love. And, and I think that that's about living with intention and living with love in your heart. So I, I love this reading. Did you guys like this reading? Oh my Lord. Boo Radley said, I love that reading, Dad. Okay, let me read from Nightlight by Amy Dean and then we'll be done, boys. Oh, we're already into May. Let's not rush the year that much. I can't believe that February is over already. Okay, March 2nd. 
For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5.14 Happy and harmonious relationships are essential. If we treat people with uncaring concern and indifference, they will think there are no paths to our hearts. This is kind of similar to what we were just talking about. If we meet people with the expectation that they will do more for us than we will do for them, they will turn away from us. How do we treat people today? Were we short with coworkers and customer or cus were we short with cus How do we treat people today? Were we short with coworkers or customers, impatient with students, patients or children, unloving toward friends or relatives? Were we so wrapped up in ourselves that we weren't aware? Here's the selfishness and self-centeredness again. Were we so wrapped up in ourselves that we weren't aware when people around us needed a bit of attention? We can repair the roads to our hearts so the paths are straight and true. We can rebuild relationships with those around us. If we can help others feel safe, comfortable, and at ease in our presence, we will encourage positive feelings. And then people will feel safe and will turn to us in friendliness and in safety. What are the messages on the road to my heart? Help me firm the road's foundation with love, peace, and safety. I don't know. I started getting real emotional reading that. You know, I think it's like, I'm not really sure why. Um, I just kind of had this overwhelming, like, sense of emotion um, in reading that. Uh, we can rebuild relationships with those around us. If we can help others feel safe, comfortable, and at ease in our presence, we will encourage positive feelings, and people will feel safe and will turn to us in friendliness and in safety. But I think it was this that got me emotional. What are the messages on the road to my heart? I think that's such a great question, you know? It's like, what does my soul speak of? You know, the people that know me really well, you know? Uh, my friend Tanya always says this, and I love this. She said, if you want to know how I'm really doing, don't ask me. Ask my husband, ask my kid, ask my best friend, ask my workers, you know, my employ employees. She's like, you know, ask them, hello? Because those are the people that really are affected by how I'm doing on a daily basis. And I think it's such a great, it's such a great question. What are the messages to my heart? You know, what does my heart speak of? What is my intention? Um, what, you know, what do others see in me? What is, you know, when others get close, you know, do, how do they feel? And I think that that is all put out by who we are as people, you know? Um, and I love that it goes in here and it talks about expectations. We meet people with the expectation that they will do more for us and we will do for them. They will turn away from us. The idea of expectations, and I try very, very hard not to have any anymore. The idea of expectations leads to resentments and resentments are unfulfilled expectations. And what that means is that if we have an expectation of someone to uh, act a certain way or that a situation is supposed to go a certain way and it doesn't, it falls short of that or doesn't happen at all, right? We become angry and resentful and we build a grudge. Sometimes one that we hold for years and years and years. This is when people say, don't allow people to rent space in your head for free. That means those people have gone on and lived their lives. They don't even know that you have this resentment towards them. And every time you see them or hear their name, you just like go off, right? Because it's an incident that happened because your expectation was that somebody should treat you a certain way, right? It's not saying that they shouldn't have, okay? I think, you know, that there's like, I think that human beings should treat human beings kindly. It doesn't mean that it happens, right? And then it goes to that idea of forgiveness, you know, that I've talked about that I learned from Oprah where, you know, she says, you know, forgiveness is acceptance of the fact that something happened the way that it did. Not that it was okay what happened. You know, this is where you go to that resentment. You think about that thing that happened, that those people or that situation fell short. I mean, it could be, you know, like a place of employment that you had or maybe a holiday or a vacation that you're resentful towards or, you know, whatever, because it's like, I was so excited and it didn't happen the way that I wanted it to happen. Um, you know, but it's like forgiveness or acceptance of that is looking at that situation and accepting the fact that it wasn't okay the way that it happened, but it happened, okay? And you can't change the past, so what are you gonna do about it now? That's true forgiveness in your heart is letting go of that, right? For you, not for that other person, not for that situation, but for you. Um, and I love that idea, you know? There have been people and situations in my life in the past 47 years well, I mean, not, let's say 40, 42. <laughs> Maybe when I was two, I started working on resentments. No, I should have, but I didn't. But I don't know how long. But, you know, like, there's been situations in my life where little Boo Radley is down here. He's like, I need so much. Do you see him? He's like, I need so much attention. Um, there's been situations in my life where I have, you know, really had to lower my expectations with people until I really had no expectations at all. And, you know, in all honesty, with my mom getting sober six months after I did, 
I look at that in retrospect, and I think what really happened, you know, because I didn't have a lot of contact with her from the time that I got sober, December 17th of 1994, until she got sober June 2nd of 1995, I really had very little contact with my mom during that next six months, because I told her I, I can't be around other people that are drinking, and you're one of those people. And, you know, I really think what happened, this is kind of like an aha moment that I just had sitting here talking about it, is... I think I really lowered my expect. I think I had no expectations for her in that six months. Because I can remember her getting sober and I just kind of was, I wasn't like elated and I wasn't like, oh my God. And it wasn't, I wasn't like, I don't believe her. I just was kind of like, I don't know. I'm sure I had all those feelings. I probably talked about them at one time or another on here. But in retrospect, looking at it today, I look back on that. I kind of remember being like, okay. Like I didn't really have any expectations for her whatsoever. And I think what was so beautiful about that is, it allowed us to rebuild our relationship from the ground up, you know? Um, and then she, she was able to be a mother and I was able to be a son because we had a real skewed version of what that relationship was supposed to be like. And for a long time, I had been a parent and she had been a child. And so that rebuilding of the relationship occurred at that point. I never thought of it that way, though, you know, but like, I think it's great um, when we get our expectations down to the point where we have no expectations for somebody because then they they can't let us down and we can't be hurt by what happens. And then when good things do happen, we are pleasantly surprised by their, you know, their actions. And that's how I like to live my life, to look at somebody and go, wow, like they really surprised me pleasantly. Like, you know what, that like, that's really cool. So anyway, um... You know, if you take anything away from this, what I would take away is, you know, maybe trying to lower your expectations. If you're in a situation where you find yourself continuously hurt by somebody over and over and over again, I'm not talking about serious situations that you need to seek professional help for. I'm talking about where somebody lets you down. It's like you, you think you're going to do something with them and they cancel. And you think you're going to do something with them and they cancel, right? Or, you know, maybe you have a relationship, I don't know, with you know, like, uh, your sister, and you see all these relationships with sisters where they're, like, best friends, right? And then it's, like, your relationship isn't that, and you constantly, you know, compare your relationship to somebody else's. It's, like, you know, lower your expectations. Lower your expectations for your sister until you almost have none, and I have seen miracles occur that when you lower your expectations to a point where you have no expectations for that person anymore, sometimes they pleasantly surprise you. You know, like I talked about with my mom. And maybe one day you'll have that relationship with your sister that you wanted. Or maybe you'll have a better relationship with her than you do today. But if you have no expectations, you can't continue to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let me know what you guys think about those meditations. I love you. And be rather, do you want to say goodnight to everybody? He said goodnight, everybody. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.